Okay, in the last class, we learned that we can separate dui dxj, the velocity gradient tensor, into a symmetric strain rate tensor sij and a antisymmetric rotation tensor rij, where sij And the reason for why the half is defined inside the tensor for the strain rate tensor and outside for the rotation tensor will become clear later, hopefully. There's two things to know about these. The strain rate tensor deforms a fluid element and it is relevant for the stress field. Whereas the rotation tensor doesn't deform, it only rotates, it corresponds to solid body rotation. And so it is not relevant for the stress field. Now let's look at the strain rate tensor in some more detail. We can write S as following matrix, and I'm going to use a shorthand here for derivatives. Let me define that ui comma j is equivalent to the partial derivative of ui in the j direction. And so if we consider the matrix corresponding to the strain rate tensor, for example s11, in this case you would have a half du1 dx1 plus a half du1 dx1, so it would just be du1 dx1. For the case du1, u2, you have a half du1, dx2, plus du2, dx1. But since this tensor is symmetric, it again is just du1, 2. So I can write this tensor as u1, 1. Now since this tensor is symmetric, this will be u1, 2, u2. Now the diagonal elements of this matrix correspond to elongation or contraction of a fluid element along the principal axes. And we refer to these as the linear strain rates, whereas the off-diagonal elements are the shear deformations. So let's look at the linear strain rates in a little more detail. Consider a 2D fluid element at time t that extends from locations A to B. So it has this distance that it covers in the first direction, delta x1. Considering flow that only has a u1 in the x1 component. So this is location x1. And here we are at location x1 plus delta x1. Now, at location x1 plus delta x1, the velocity might be slightly different. So this is u1 at x1 plus delta x1. And we can perform the Taylor series expansion that we've done in the past to write this as u1 plus delta x1 d dx1. Now, at a later time, t plus dt, our fluid element has elongated. So here now we're at location a dash and b dash at time t plus dt. And now my original distance delta x1 only covers part of the length of my fluid element and we have added a delta l. So this here delta x1 plus delta l is the distance a dash b dash, whereas delta x1 corresponds to the distance a b. Now, the back end of our fluid element has traveled from a to a dash, which is simply the velocity u1 times dt, whereas the front end has gone from b to b dash, which is the velocity u1 plus delta x1 du1 dx1 times 
dt. Now we're interested in the rate of change of the fluid element length here, per unit length, since we're considering strains, right? So it's always relative to the original length. Now recall the definition of a derivative. A derivative is df dt is in the limit of dt going to zero. The value of f at some time t plus dt minus f at t divided by dt. Now, we're extending this to the case of fluid mechanics where we have our new derivative is the material derivative d by dt of delta x1, which is the extension of delta x1 as we follow the fluid element. And in this case, here, we can write this as the limit where dt goes to zero. And now our delta x1 at time t plus dt is just a dash b dash minus f at time t, which is a b, divided by dt. And since we're interested in the relative extension, we divide by delta x1, so 1 over delta x1 d delta x1 dt delta x1. Um, and I rearrange slightly to write this as a dash b dash. Now, if we consider a dash b dash minus a b, you will realize that it's this distance b b dash minus a a dash, i.e. delta l. So... But that's interesting because we can write a a dash as u1 dt and b b dash in terms of this Taylor expansion here. So we write that this is just equal to u1 plus delta x1 du1 dx1 dt minus u1 dt, which is simply delta x1 du1 dx1 dt, since the u1 terms cancel. So as a result, we find that a dash b dash minus a b divided by a b is simply delta x1 du1 dx1 dt divided by delta x1, and again the dx1 cancel, so we're left with du1 dx1 dt. Now remember our definition of the rate of extension of our fluid element. So we plug this into here and we're left with 1 over delta x1 d delta x1 dt is equal to limit of dt going to 0, 1 over dt du1 dx1 dt. And now since again 1 over dt and dt cancel, our right hand side becomes independent of dt, so we can just write this as du1 dx1, which we have shown earlier is just our 1 1 element of our strain rate tensor. So in other words, our strain rate tensor S11, that element is just the linear elongation of the length of a fluid element in the direction x1. And in general we write this as s eta eta equals du eta dx eta. And here I note that we use Greek letters to signify that we don't have summation over repeated indices. So these are the diagonal terms of our strain rate tensor and they represent the linear strain rates.